Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Erin Viner. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, Australia has halted direct aid to the Palestinian Authority. Canberra's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said that her government has stopped all such payments to Ramallah out of concern that the money could be used to fund Palestinian terrorism. Nearly seven and a half million dollars earmarked for the PA will now be rerouted to a United Nations humanitarian fund to ensure that it is not used for terror. Member of Parliament Erica Betts praised the decision and explained it's vital to ensure that Australian foreign aid is not being spent on the promotion of terrorism and that the funneling of his country's aid through the UN will provide greater assurance that the Palestinian Authority's clever accounting cannot occur. The Israeli Defense Forces has sent tons of food and medical supplies to displaced Syrian refugees. The Assad regime has led a vicious bombing campaign in an attempt to retake southern Syria. And the United Nations says that last week more than 160,000 Syrians were forced to flee their homes. The IDF reported that it successfully delivered nearly 30 tons of food, crates of medical supplies and 30 tons of clothing, shoes and blankets to refugees in the war-torn country. Israel has taken in and treated several wounded Syrian citizens, including four newly orphaned children whose parents were reportedly killed in the bombings. Israeli forces remain on high alert on the northern border, and a senior Israeli army official said that the IDF is preparing for several possible scenarios, including the infiltration of Iranian forces near the Israeli border, as well as an increase in errant mortar rounds fired from Syria into Israel. Former U.S. President Barack Obama reportedly granted U.S. citizenship to thousands of Iranians during the 2015 nuclear negotiations. More information has come to light about the Obama administration's dangerous concessions to secure what is widely considered the worst deal in history. We have reported that the Obama White House paid over a billion dollars to Tehran and attempted to give the rogue Islamic Republic access to the American banking system. Now, a senior Islamic cleric and member of the Iranian parliament is claiming that during the talks, Obama awarded American citizenship to 2,500 Iranians, including the family members of top government officials linked to President Hassan Rouhani. Mexico City has elected a Jewish woman as mayor. This is the first time in history that the residents of the largest city in North America have chosen a woman and a Jew to serve as the city's leader. Claudia Scheinbaum is the grandchild of Jewish immigrants from Lithuania and Bulgaria, and she says that she feels very connected to the Jewish community of Mexico City, where nearly all of the country's 40,000 Jews reside. The European Union is being pressured to ban the Jewish state from participating in the forum's upcoming research and development initiative. Israel is a world leader in innovation and has been a top recipient of EU R&D grants in the past, but now a group of anti-Israel activists are petitioning members of the European Parliament to block the country from joining the program. Jerusalem has invested more than $1.5 billion to participate in the initiative, and one Israeli official said that if this prevention campaign goes forward, billions of dollars in research and development grants for science and technology would be lost. Muslims continue to desecrate the Temple Mount while threatening violence if Israel intervenes. During the recent Muslim holiday of Ramadan, hundreds of Muslims illegally dug up the antiquities rich soil on the Temple Mount and attempted to dispose of it. An Israeli archaeologist reported the activity to the police who prevented the disposal of the artifacts, but archaeologists believe that the site sustained irreparable damage. This provocation prompted Israeli police to construct an observation point atop the Golden Gate to ensure the safety of archaeological artifacts on Mount Moriah. The Temple Mount is holy to Jews, Christians, and Muslims, but the Islamic Waqf, which controls the site, forbids other religions from worshipping or praying there and heavily restricts access to non-Muslims. Israeli police and the Shin Bet security organization have confiscated funds paid by Hamas to the family of an Arab terrorist living in Jerusalem. This was part of a larger operation to prevent the Islamist group from paying incentives to terrorists for killing Jews. Israeli authorities say that in 2017, they seized more than 300,000 shekels in Hamas funds before they made their way into the hands of terrorists' families. Just last week, Israel seized 43,000 shekels in cash 
at the home of the terrorist who murdered Jewish teenagers and a 26-year-old student at the Merkaz Harav Yeshiva in Jerusalem in 2008. A spokesperson for the Israeli police released a statement saying that they would not allow Hamas to gain a foothold in Jerusalem by paying the families of terrorists who murdered innocent Israelis. After several months of pressure, arguments, and a breakdown in diplomatic ties with Jerusalem, Warsaw has finally made an amendment to its highly controversial Holocaust law. The revision nixes the prison sentence of up to three years for any person who says that Poland was complicit in the Holocaust or uses the term Polish death camps. More than 80 percent of the once vibrant Jewish community of Poland was wiped out during the Second World War. Polish citizens assisted the Nazis in their campaign to eradicate the Jewish people, but Poland insists that their blame lies solely with the Nazis and that they were also victims. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu praised the decision to amend the law, but many Israeli officials are saying that it is not enough and that Poland must take responsibility for their role in the genocide and make reparations to the Polish victims of the Holocaust. While the Iranian government called for the destruction of the Jewish state during its annual Quds Day marches, thousands of Iranian people tweeted their support for the Jewish state. Israel's foreign ministry has created a digital diplomacy campaign for the Iranian people called Israel in Persian. The manager of the program, Sharona Avgensan, said that during the week of Quds Day, Israel's Persian Twitter page re reached 2.5 million Iranian citizens. Tens of thousands of them tweeted the hashtag, We Stand With Israel, and added their personal messages of love for the Jewish state. This unprecedented show of support comes just days after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a video message offering Israel's water technology to the Iranian people who are suffering from a crippling drought. Netanyahu announced that Israel will post desalination technology in Farsi online so that Iranian farmers can recycle wastewater and use it to grow crops. He said, while the Iranian regime shouts death to Israel, the Jewish state responds by shouting life to the Iranian people. The United Nations has taken a brief pause from condemning Israel to reward the Jewish state for saving Palestinian children. The Save a Child's Heart, or Sach, has become the first Israeli organization to be awarded the UN's Population Award for having taken extraordinary efforts to treat children with cardiac conditions. Sach has performed life-saving surgeries on more than 5,000 children from 57 war-torn or developing countries, including more than 2,000 Palestinian children. The organization believes that it is sowing the seeds of peace by healing hearts. And lead surgeon Lior Sasson expressed his hope that the work will help to promote peace with the Palestinians. Israel is proposing several ways to help ease the humanitarian crisis in Gaza caused by the Hamas terror group. Despite facing daily attacks from Gaza, Israel has approved plans to construct a solar field to provide power to the citizens of Gaza and has appealed to Cyprus to establish a Gaza shipping port. Unfortunately, Hamas continues to exploit the suffering of Gazans and is using them as pawns against Israel. The terror group is refusing to consider the seaport or to discuss Israel's request to release several civilians and the bodies of Israeli soldiers held in its custody. Jerusalem announced that it plans to bypass the terror group by proposing the plans directly to the people of Gaza in hopes that they will take the lifeline being offered to them to create a sustainable future in the enclave and hopefully break free of the oppressive terrorist regime which controls them. Prosecutors in Germany are now focusing war crimes investigations on suspected members of mobile Nazi killing units known as Einsatzgruppen. These murderous squads operated during the Second World War and are believed to be responsible for up to one million deaths. Separate cases have been opened against three alleged members. The action is facilitated by a new legal argument allowing for the prosecution of anyone who assisted in the running of the Third Reich's killing machine, even if they are not accused of individual murders. The most recent suspect is 95-year-old former SS Corporal Wilhelm Karl Friedrich Hofmeister. He is alleged to have served with an Einsatzgruppen unit that carried out the 1941 shootings of nearly 34,000 people at Babi Yar in Ukraine in what was one of the most notorious massacres of the Holocaust. The United States Army has penned a deal to buy an Israeli tank defense system for nearly $200 million. 
The Trophy Defense System is designed to shield the Abrams tanks and other armored vehicles by blocking anti-tank missiles and rockets. The system, called Me'il Ruach, or Windbreaker in Hebrew, was designed by Israeli defense giant Rafael Industries. It is equipped with a radar system that detects incoming projectiles, calculates their trajectory, and triggers the launch of small metal pellets like buckshot, which causes the rocket to misfire away from the tank. Rafael Industries announced the deal, saying that, that elements of the system would be manufactured in Israel and other parts of the trophy system would be built in America. Officials with the United States Army praised the acquisition and said that U.S. tanks would be equipped with the Israeli-made tank defense system by 2020. Israeli-made water gen has been recognized by the World Economic Forum as a technology pioneer. Water gen technology creates clean, cold drinking water from thin air. The head of the Technology Pioneer Program at the World Economic Forum said that water gen is front and center in shaping the ongoing fourth industrial revolution, which the company believes will transform society and industry in a positive way in the years to come. Water Gen's executive chairman said that the patented water from air technology will save millions of lives and improve the quality of life of billions while preventing water access based conflict and eliminating unnecessary pollution from plastic waste. That concludes the news portion of our show. Please stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful sunny day on our rooftop studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Momir Kallis. He's the international director of the International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem. Momir, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, Mumbert, tell our viewers a little bit about what is the ICEJ. The International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem is a Christian organization which was founded in Jerusalem at the time when all the embassies were fleeing the city in order to uh, take a stand on behalf of Christians saying that we believe that Jews have the right to call Jerusalem their eternal capital. Uh, this is an exciting time for the International Christian Embassy because uh, all these embassies are moving to Israel, first America, then uh, Guatemala, Paraguay, more on the way. What does this mean to the Christian Embassy that other embassies are now joining them in Jerusalem? Well, of course, we feel vindicated because that's what we started saying almost 40 years ago. Uh, but seriously, I believe that this marks a beginning of a new era. Uh, we believe that many nations from many different continents will follow the leadership of the United States and Guatemala and Paraguay. And uh, we believe that it will also have spiritual significance. You're giving uh, something called the Cyrus Award to any nation, the first 10 nations that move their embassies to Jerusalem. Tell us about the award. Well, the idea uh, came into being when we visited the British Museum in London and actually we saw the original Cyrus cylinder, which uh, is an uh, incredible artifact. It was found uh, somewhere at uh, the gates of Babylon. This is in fact one of the most important archaeological finds because it confirms what the Bible says about this great Persian king who allowed the Jews to go back to Jerusalem and build the temple. Do you see President Donald Trump as a Cyrus character, a Cyrus of our times? I believe we can say so because we know from the Bible that God can use even uh, pagan kings to do his will. Uh, you're actually originally from the Czech Republic and we're seeing incredible support for Israel from Eastern Europe, yet we're seeing a lot of antagonistic, anti-Israel sentiment from Western Europe. Why the diversion? I believe it uh, has to do with the history because uh, Europe was divided by the Iron Curtain and we on the eastern part of the continent uh, had uh, not an easy time but we also learned something and I believe we can tell propaganda when we see it and uh, maybe this is something that the West lacks. Uh, you're one of the biggest or the biggest Christian organizations here in the land of Israel. Because of all these incredible things that we're seeing, the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem, the, the stopping of the Iranian capitulation deal, do you see that Christians are supporting Israel more? Or are they saying, you know what, you have now President Trump helping you, what do you need my support for? Well, it depends. Uh, we still believe that there's a great need to 
teach Christians in many countries uh, because uh, they might not have uh, correct information. But the truth is that over the last few years we have really seen a surge of interest on the part of Christians in many different countries. They want to know more about Israel and this is why we are here. Now you're in charge of the international affairs of the ICJ. Where do you see the most of the support coming from? Well, this is changing. Uh, originally, historically, the most support came from the Western countries, Western Europe, United States, Canada. Uh, now we see that this is slowly changing. We can see it on the number of pilgrims who are coming to our annual Feast of Tabernacles. Most of them come from Latin America, Africa, Asia, and even the Pacific Islands. Wow, that's very exciting. So how do people, Christians who come from these regions, how do they get involved with Israel? Well, they read their Bibles and uh, they have the advantage that they just read and understand the plain meaning of the text. So when they read Israel, they don't think that it's about them. They actually believe that it is about the Jewish people. The people who support the ICJ are all Bible-believing Christians who believe they're grafted into the covenant with Abraham. What about Christians who believe that they replaced the covenant, replacement theologists? Are they starting to understand what's happening here in the land? Well, I believe this is a real challenge because this theology which uh, has taught that Christians replaced Israel uh, is, has a built-in frame of reference which prevents them from seeing what is happening in the land of Israel as the fulfillment of God's prophecy. Uh, we see today that uh, Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu, the two heads of states, have become very close to forging incredibly close alliance between America and Israel. Uh, you travel to Europe quite a bit. Are they starting to understand that it's America and Israel back together again and that they either are on our side or on the other side? Mm -hmm. Well, that might be what some of the people in France or Germany or uh, the United Kingdom think. Uh, first of all, I believe that uh, the United States and Israel have actually never been apart for the last 40 or so years. Uh, of course, it's heartwarming to see these good relations, but I believe that uh, Christians, and especially American Christians, uh, have a major role to play because elections are coming up in the U.S. and who knows who will be elected next time. Hey, look, the ICJ is not a political organization. They primarily support the people of Israel through projects, Aliyah, Holocaust survivors. Why is it important for Christians to get involved in, in the grassroots help of, of Israelis? Well, we believe that we as Christians uh, owe quite a lot to the Jewish people. Uh, we receive the Bible from them, and we believe that we receive the Messiah. And so it's quite natural to support the Jewish people, especially in light of uh, what is going on uh, over the last decades, because the uh, re-establishment of the Jewish national home here in the land of Israel is nothing short of the fulfillment of many biblical prophecies. And we as Christians support what God is doing. Now, you briefly mentioned this, and this is another fulfillment of prophecy, the nations coming up to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. You run the Feast of Tabernacles. How significant is that as an event to bring Christians to Jerusalem? And well, I believe this is one of the most uh, important events. Actually, this is the uh, biggest uh, Christian event in the land of Israel annually. And uh, first of all, it's great to see uh, people coming from as many as 100 nations to come together in Jerusalem and celebrate God. Uh, and also show what God is doing in their countries. But especially, I believe that there is a prophetic dimension because uh, Zechariah says that the day will come when nations will come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So we are currently trying to promote this. Well, remember, there are literally tens of millions of people watching the show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? My message would be join hands, Jews and Christians, people of goodwill, and support Israel because it's where it Thank you, Momir, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Keren Esod. I'm Eliezer Moody Sandberg, 
World Chairman of Keren Ayesod, United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Due to the rise of anti-Semitism, the Jews of France are coming to Israel like never before. You will now witness the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. God bless you from Jerusalem. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Both the departure from France and the reception at Ben Gurion Airport were colorful and festive events, full of hope for the future. The reception at Ben Gurion had the feel of a homecoming celebration with flags and greetings designed to convey to the Olim that they have come home and that everything possible would be done to guarantee a promising future for them and their children and to ease their absorption. It began with the receiving Israeli ID cards already at the airport and will continue with the help of a special program designed to streamline the bureaucratic process in the fields of employment, education, and housing. אני רוצה לברך אתכם בשם משפחת קרן היסוד העולמית. זה רגע מרגש עבורכם וגם עבורנו. המדינה הזאת שייכת לכולנו. לא משנה איפה אתה גר, כחלק מהעם היהודי, ישראל היא המולדת שלך. קרן היסוד מגייסת תרומות, ויחד עם הסוכנות היהודית, השותפה שלנו, ומשרד הקליטה, אנחנו עוזרים לחלום הציוני להתגשם. The Jewish community of France is the largest in Europe, numbering half a million Jews. We are the real Zionists, we love Israel, and it's not by fear, it's really by love, because we wanted to live here. We wanted to live in Israel. I'm very excited and I'm not realistic. I want to realize that we prepare this since 10 years. There's a lot of joy, a very great emotion. I've got a lot of tears, I've got a lot of tears, and I hope that everyone will be able to realize this dream. C'est un projet de vie, ça fait euh, depuis qu'on est marié, c'était notre projet de monter en Israël. Je trouve que c'est très impressionnant euh, d'arriver dans un nouveau pays dans lequel on, on se dit euh, on va arriver, on connaît entre guillemets personne, seul, et au final, euh, c'est euh, impressionnant, impressionnant. Parce qu'on n'est pas seul et euh, vraiment, c'est bon. Il n'y a que Israël pour faire ça, c'est vraiment, euh, voilà. Mesdames et Messieurs, le Premier ministre de l'État d'Israël, M. Bibi Netanyahu. Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue en Israël. Il y a une famille qui est très bien. Les Juifs qui ont été venus de la France, ils ont été venus de la France. Mais tout le monde a été venus de la France. Nous aimons la France. Nous aimons la France de la France de la France de la France, qui est aussi une personne personnelle. Une personne personnelle grand et une personne personnelle grand. Une personne personnelle grand. Come join Keren Ayesod in fulfilling biblical prophecy. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. The opening of the U.S. Embassy uh, in Jerusalem on May 14th was widely criticized uh, in the U.S. media and the world media as being a radical departure for long-standing American policy toward Israel and the Middle East. It was not. 
the departure from American policy was the 70 years in which the United States did not recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. For hundreds of years before 1948, America's attitude toward this land was that in order to be a great nation, America, in order for Americans to be good Christians and good citizens, they had to support the recreation of a Jewish state in this country and the Jewish state with only one individual capital, the capital city of Jerusalem. That was the case in the early part of the 19th century when Americans such as Harriet Livermore, Sarah Haight, John Turner Barclay came to Jerusalem and they established colonies which had one purpose and that was to teach the Jews how to regain their sovereignty in the land of Israel. And they, they made the colonies here for the purpose that Jerusalem would be the capital of that future state. America's first consul general in Jerusalem, Warder Cresson of Philadelphia, came to this city in the old city in 1844. He immediately set up the American eagle over his doorway and said that the eagle's wing would protect the Jewish people and help ingather them to Israel and Jerusalem to recreate a Jewish state. Water Crescent, who later converted to Judaism and became a leader of the Sephardic community here, buried on the Mount of Olives, was a symbol of America's commitment to Jerusalem as the capital of a reborn Jewish state. That same idea informed the policies of Abraham Lincoln, whose last words on earth were his wish to visit Jerusalem. He said it twice on the way to Ford's Theater. Um, the, la the, the, the deep and yearning of Woodrow Wilson and, of course, Harry Truman to see Israel recreated with Jerusalem as its capital. The opening of that embassy on May 14th was not a departure. The, May, the opening of the embassy on May 14th was an historic return. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the promised land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Anti-Semitism threatens many of the Jews. We must rescue them before the window of opportunity slams shut. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let us bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Erin Viner. And I'm Rebecca Rand, reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us next week for all of your Israel updates.